Twas the show before Christmas, and all through PC each student was working, that is, all but Bree. The editors were prepping in production with care, hoping Professor Dan's final grade would be fair. Then what, to my wondering ears, did I hear? A caroling Emily shouting, Christmas is here! A bald engineer, so lively and quick, ready for repair or to make that big fix. And eager to take this show by the reins, Haley whistled and shouted, calling classmates by name. On Karen, on Sarah, on Spencer and Sam. Stop fooling around and start giving a damn. We need scripts, we need graphics. It's time to go, Ham. No time to delay. We're stuck in a jam. As the prompter was set and the camera stood by, imminent finals forced J.D. to cry. And up to the set, the anchors they flew with a prompter full of words they surely knew. And the audio increased and they tested their sound and the TV frantically pushed buttons around. The show was all ready, or at least so they thought, until stress levels heightened and emotions were taught. Then Sam spilled cocoa on Karen's shoe and Sarah said Spencer's graphics were poo. Haley claimed Emily's song was off pitch. Emily shot back, you son of a It was quite apparent that the crew had grown weary. The fate of the show began to seem scary. Stop, everyone stop. Why do we fight? Christmas should be a cheerful delight. We've worked hard all semester. This is meant to be fun. The Christmas show has nearly begun. Our fans truly need us, so let's not delay. Time to get busy. Make this show the right way. And that very moment, things seemed not so gray. And each crew member's heart grew three sizes that day. With a new purpose, they took their positions, now ready to complete their holiday mission. We've been prepping a lot for this magical day. And with that, she exclaimed, take it away. didn't see you there. My name's Sam Johnson and I'm the EP here for the GUTV Christmas special, otherwise known as the show before Christmas. Stay tuned because we've got a lot of really great stuff coming up and you're watching GUTV. Happy holidays. Litter Captain, the world needs you. You know what to do. I'm on it. You there! Not the litter, Captain! Don't litter, or I'll be bitter. So, as a college student, I can't really have a pet of my own. But I want to do something to help out these, you know, really neglected animals. I mean, we can't help all these animals, but every little effort goes a long way. Because, uh, quite honestly, every animal deserves at least one happy day. Good luck. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Alright, so you have to use twine. And five, four, three, two, one. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Since one part of the front of the house um, was broken, I am doing an open concept. Oh. And by that I mean I'm like doing the inside of the house. God, 
I'm building Fort Knox here. <laughs> Don't touch my methods. I didn't know you were cutting your house. <laughs> I'm trying to I'm trying to get a straight line. Yeah, you're doing a great job. Yeah, thanks. You doing okay? Yeah, I'm doing fantastic. Okay, cool. Just wanna make sure it's just a fun experience, doesn't matter who wins or loses. Sure. Do you want the twine? There you go. Can you not what? steal my idea? <laughs> Where's your Christmas lights? They're right here. I'm stringing you them. You talking about those little blobs of the icing? No, that's not it. That's just to secure it. Don't worry about me. I'm doing just fine. Worry about yourself, okay? That's scary. Get anxiety. <laughs> it's, really, it's really nice and icing. You don't even know what I'm trying. I don't even know what I'm trying. <laughs> You feeling the cheer? You feeling the happiness and cheer? Okay, look at my gingerbread men. They're in the house, in the happy. <laughs> These are freezing outside. These aren't to scale. Look at your own house. <laughs> Don't you dare look at mine. Eyes on your own house. <laughs> What is, what are these? I'm sorry. This is gonna be the railing. My grandparents are coming over, they need something more. No, 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 these. Those are the stepping stones. <laughs> I think if your grandparents need railings to walk somewhere, I think those stepping stones aren't gonna help them. They're made by their grandchildren, so they love them. <laughs> I was hoping it was gonna stack on top of itself, but it just kinda. <laughs> I have created a winter wonderland. Um, you can God. see <laughs> inside we have a nice scene with a sofa and a roaring fireplace and a tree. But no one is there because they're all asleep. <laughs> and who came to give him presents? <laughs> Santa! But he ate too many cookies this year. So he's stuck um, with his feet up and his sack sitting on the roof. And this is supposed to be like one of those blow up snowmen <clears throat> in the front yard. All right, moving on to mine. So right here they have a transparent glass window. So that's why you can't see it because it's a transparent glass window. Santa comes on the roof. What's that? Kids are going to see him. So when they see him, they're going to get super happy. If you can see, they're smiling inside their warm and cozy house. See it? Yeah. Um, then I've got the Christmas lights up. I've got a little red beacon up here so Santa can know where to land. I've got a little set of trail, uh, stepping stones, and some railing in case Santa, you know, just needs to walk a little. I also have a little, little set up here off the end of the rail for where he can hook up his reindeer. And, um, yeah, in the end, I, I just want everyone to know I did this for the love of Christmas and not for competition. <laughs> The experience that you have abroad is going to be as meaningful, I believe, as the effort that you put into it. I hope that what Study Abroad and what the Center for Global Engagement in particular does is that it opens up the whole campus to both differences and both that engagement, that willingness to change, and by doing that lift you up in a way that expands your mind 
and helps you engage the world in a different way. Go abroad. So as a college student, I can't really have a pet of my own. But I want to do something to help out these, you know, really neglected animals. I mean, we can't help all of these animals, but every little effort goes a long way. Because, uh, quite honestly, every animal deserves at least one happy day. It's Christmas Eve. It's Spokane, Washington. Is Daddy coming home soon? Well, we'll see if Santa and Mommy can do okay? All the children are gathered around to see John McLean and his wife. Since this is a family show, we can't show you violence, so instead, we'll read it to you. Written by Doogie Horner, illustrated by J.J. Harrison, and presented by me, J.D. Bricker. We present Die Hard. Christmas. Twas the night before Christmas, and up in the tower, everyone was partying except for one wallflower. John McLean missed his wife. Things just weren't the same since Holly had moved west and changed her last name. He tried to win her back, but still she said no, while unbeknownst to them, there was trouble below. A truck pulled up, and who should disembark but 14 men whose intentions were dark. They spoke not a word and unloaded big crates. They cut the phone lines and locked all the gates. Carl swept the ground floor, shooting every guard dead, while visions of bear bonds danced in his head. John took off his shoes, making fists with his toes. It actually worked. Well, what do you know? When out in the lobby, there arose such a clatter, he sprung to the door to see what was the matter. When what to his wondering eyes should appear, holy crap, there are terrorists here. John hid under a table where no one could see and watched Hans question, Mr. Takagi. I'm going to count to three, there will not be a four. Give me that codes to open the vault door. John tried to call the cops by pulling an alarm, but instead called the bad guys who tried to cause him harm. But John killed Tony, who had very small feet, and sent him to the terrorists as a Yule Tide treat. Carl was furious, Tony was his brother, chased John across the roof and shot at each other. John was able to escape through the ventilation shafts. Come out to the coast, he sighed, we'll have a few laughs. More police arrived, the FBI and a SWAT team, but Hans didn't mind, it was all part of his scheme. More rapid than eagles, his henchmen they came and radioed and shouted and called them by name. Now Eddie, now James, now Franco, now Uli, on Fritz and Carl, hair long and unruly. They shot the SWAT tank with a service-to-air missile and knocked it away like the down of a thistle. But a reporter was probing into McLean's life and revealed that Holly was actually John's wife. Hans quickly flipped over the gold picture frame. It's a pleasure to meet you, Miss McLean. His clothes all tarnished with ashes and soot, John staggered to the roof, bloody and barefoot. The explosives were wired in the rooftop of care in hopes that hostages would soon be there. Fiercely fighting his way back inside, John yelled Hans. He was done trying to hide. He limped to the vault like an old man on crutches, only to find Holly in his filthy clutches. John dropped his gun, put his hands on his head. It seemed he and Holly soon would be dead. But there was a secret gun taped to his back. John shot Hans in a surprise attack. Hans fell out the window, still holding Holly's arm, and slowly, deliberately raised his firearm. Tenacious villain held on by his nails, till John unhooked Holly's watch and said, Happy trails. Bare bonds fluttered like fresh fallen snow as Holly embraced her bloody, spattered bow. So Merry Christmas to all, be kind to one another, and most of all, yippee ki Since the birth of television, the airways have been dominated by variety shows. Charismatic men charming live audiences with talent acts and comedy, serving the nation's need to laugh together. All that started in 1948. And today, 
it's still real sausage fest. Hi, I'm Rachel Carlson. And when I was developing this new show, I thought to myself, so who would be the best type of person to run it? Women, because hashtag women's jokes matter. Well, what about all jokes matter? No. And then who to host? I decided to turn to my dear friend, the funniest, most beautiful, most talented person I know, me. Another thing that I've decided is that from here on out, I'm not gonna make any more decisions. I'm gonna say that I wanna do a Pinterest cooking segment, rejected Boone Street hooligan sketch, or have a live band. I'm gonna post it on social media and you'll get to decide what you see on the show. So look out next semester for the latest show starring Rachel Carlson. It'll be part live, part not, but all yours. Litter Captain, the world needs you. You know what to do. I'm on it. You there! Not the litter, Captain! Don't litter, or I'll be bitter. I remember waking up, and in my, my hometown in Pennsylvania, we had a front room, Christmas tree and sliding doors. And one Christmas, let's say I was six or seven, my parents had completely filled our Christmas tree room with gifts. Like you would have to chip away at it. You couldn't even walk into the room to get gifts out. It was awesome. Um, I started hating Christmas, I think when I was like five or six. I My parents tried to convince me to believe in Santa and it never really worked out. And I think that that's what started it for me. I think about that feeling when I was six and uh, waking up and just the tremendous sense of love that I had for my parents and how much work they put into that event, um, how special it made us all feel and if I can replicate that with the students that I work with here at Gonzaga or at, with my neighbors or with family like it's awesome. I just want everybody to feel it. I do understand like the family aspect of it and I love my family so I pretend for my mom and my nieces and nephews now but yeah, I was probably the Grinch. I was the worst kid. I would like throw fits about having to wake up early to open gifts and stuff like that. Bake cookies, uh, celebrate Christmas with the student athletes, put on the winter formal for our student athletes, go shopping, go shopping some more, max out my Amazon Prime card. Um, yeah, and then just really care. Care for everybody in my neighborhood, care for everybody that we work with here at Gonzaga, care for my wife. I think everyone takes it like to the next level. Shopping for groceries becomes hard because people are constantly doing it. Like it just makes it everything's over the top. The lights, the glitter, the glam. I just I'm it's I'm low key for that holiday for sure. I mean I get it, but it's human nature to kind of want and remember, and we want to feel good. And Christmas doesn't have to be about commercialization. You don't have to buy 30 ugly Christmas sweaters or buy $150 Nikes that have snowmen on them. If it's just kind of taking a break from our normal lives and saying that there are really special people that I spend the whole year with that I usually don't pause and give thanks for enough. So for them, I would say, yeah, you don't have to go Black Friday shopping. You don't have to have a room full of presents and you know, gotta eat junk food for the whole month, but take time make sure you're recognizing the really special people in your life in some way. I do really like seeing everybody and how much people are thankful for and stuff like that, but I think as far as the family aspect, that's where it ends for me. Once you start going red and green, I'm kind of over it at that point. I think it was seven or eight years ago, 
and I just got sick of wearing Gonzaga polos to work and Gonzaga jackets to work. So I started buying like one-offs at Goodwill and then the kids really responded to it and it became something fun and it replaced, for at least a month, it replaces all my Gonzaga swag. So I do, I have a different ugly Christmas sweater for every day of work with the day after Thanksgiving. This is my newest edition. I think the concept of ugly Christmas sweater parties is so cool and so fun. And I like that people go out of their way to like find the worst ones, but I would not be caught dead wearing one ever. Jingle Bell. I don't even actually know how that goes. It's like, yeah, I couldn't. At jingle Bell, Jingle Bell. That's not even the right one. I was gonna say Jingle Bell Rock. Nope, I can't. So last night I spent seven hours baking cookies. I think we had like 13 dozen cookies. I burned one batch. So 13 dozen cookies um, that I hope you'd eaten up all day today. I will not lie, the desserts are probably the better half of it. I like Christmas cookies. 10 out of 10 would recommend. Merry Christmas. I'm fine. You know, this year's going a lot better. I'm making friends. I'm not as homesick. I've started talking about it. I, I don't take those meds anymore. And those thoughts, they just, they don't scare me as much. But am I okay? I mean, I think I'm okay. I don't really know what to tell people. No one's really asked me that in a while. I write for the Bulletin because writing is one of my big passions. I've always really liked it growing up. And to be a voice for the students is a big thing for me. You find out things about people that you wouldn't know necessarily. Through this, you can meet new people and see about different ideas because there's all different kinds of views politically. You never know what you're going to read and it's written by students for students. I am Brandon Vasquez and I am a sports staff writer for the Bulletin. My name is Matthew Bracken. I am a junior, and I'm the operations chair for Gonzaga Dance Marathon. <clears throat> Dance Marathon is an organization that's a part of a larger uh, nonprofit called Children's Miracle Network. Children's Miracle Network helps benefit children's hospitals around around the country. As far as Gonzaga University Dance Marathon, we're a club on campus that raises money for our local children's hospital. Yeah, we have a, a huge event in April that where the Gonzaga, Gonzaga community comes together and dances and fundraises for uh, eight hours to, to make miracles happen. Dance Marathon is going to be on uh, April 7th. As a freshman, I heard about it and I thought it was going to be uh, cool and fun because um, of my experiences with children's uh, children's hospitals, so I went not really knowing what to expect, but then I realized that it's a really fun event where you get to experience time with kids in the hospital. 2016 Gonzaga University Dance Marathon was uh, the first year of existence, and it raised just over six thousand. Their second year, they raised a little over thirty-two. And then the third year, last year, the goal we we set was sixty-two thousand dollars, and we surpassed that by raising just over seventy-two thousand dollars. In twenty eighteen, we we set a goal of one hundred and seventy thousand dollars to 
raise a hundred thousand more dollars for miracles at the children's hospital. The experience that you have abroad is going to be as meaningful, I believe, as the effort that you put into it. I hope that what Study Abroad and what the Center for Global Engagement in particular does is that it opens up the whole campus to both differences and both that engagement, that willingness to change, and by doing that lift you up in a way that expands your mind and helps you engage the world in a different way. Go abroad. We wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. So bring us some figgy pudding. No, bring us some figgy pudding. Oh, bring us some figgy pudding and a cup of good cheer. We won't go until we get some. We won't go until we get some. We won't go until we get some. So bring it right here. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Woo! Yeah. <laughs>